Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Reben Seiya's map. But before that, this video is brought to you by Squiggy486 and Paul and Adon Jr. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Reben Seiya's map. Google Translate attempted to help me with that one. At any rate, this map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let's read the description. Welcome to Reben Seiya's map. A map with a lot of relief and lots of fields to explore. Fields to open up and create your farm in your own way. Here you can plant coffee, roast it, and produce coffee for sale. Come venture into this wonderful place. This map offers a heating plant, BGA, sugarcane mill, on-site gas station and vehicle workshop, animal trader, 20 points of sale, limestone mine, water you can get from anywhere in the river or lakes, 18 production points, including coffee roasting and premium coffee, contains original crops from the game, plus coffee. If you start in new farm mode, you will have a farm with some machinery and implements, 110 areas to explore and buy, six of which are forest areas. The coffee harvester you'll find in the shop, and this map includes varied landscaping with various trees, foliage, shrubs, and more. This map does have one required mod, that is the placeable ramp. In addition to the ramp, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, anima food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you will find the main starting farm is completely void of all buildings. In addition, you do not own any starting machinery in those alternate game modes, and you do not own any land. If you load this map up on a system with low-end graphics, I will tell you that you should get pretty good frame rates. I was seeing a nice solid 60 frames per second on my test system, which uses AMD integrated graphics. Now, when you load in for the very first time, you start up here kind of at the vehicle shop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA and see where we are with representation to everything else. So here we have the main PDA and here we are at our starting location, just right beside field 21 and south of field 22. Our main starting farm is located right across the river at farmland ID four. You can buy this farmland in any alternate game mode for 422,000. $316. Now there are also several other viable farmlands that you may be interested in. We have farmland ID2 for $461,000, farmland ID5 for $277,848, farmland ID7 for $285,000, farmland ID6 for $365,000, or farmland ID8 for $168,722. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in FS22. In addition, we do have coffee as an added crop. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Now let's go ahead and cross-reference that with our field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the sizes of each particular field. As we can see, we have fields of range in size from less than one hectare all the way up to three and a half or so hectares in size. With respect to our crop counter, we have a south southern, we'll say not South American, a southern hemisphere crop counter. We are starting in February as opposed to August, which is what we do start when we are in our normal crop counter. And that is, of course, because in the Southern Hemisphere, the seasons are reversed. Now let's jump back up here to our precision farming soil map. This map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. Now we've got quite the varied levels of soil on these fields, given the Density of the fields is fairly light to this map with respect to the areas that are not set up as fields. To the north, we've got of uh, silty clay and loam. To the west, we've got all four of our soil types. And then to the south, we then have more 
loam and silty clay with a little bit of sandy loam mixed in overall. Our starting fields are going to be located right here, and they are technically not fields, and that is why, really, we don't have any soil map showing up for those. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops available to us in FS22, as well as our eggs, willow milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of our base game production items, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items, which is always a good thing to see. Now, with respect to lime, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also do have the ability of selling stones at the debris crusher. We have coffee as an added crop type. We also have roasted coffee as a production point and premium coffee as an another production point available on this map. If you are playing with the farm production pack, you do not have the ability of selling your washed root crops, nor do you have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items, which is a little bit of a shame given the amount of forestry available on the map. With respect to our premium expansion, we do have the ability to sell that. We also do have the ability to sell our separate manure if you are playing with pumps and hoses. And if you are playing with straw harvest, we do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting fleet, all of our machinery is owned, none of it is leased, and is all very well maintained. We do have, at the main farm, pig pasture, a cow barn, sheep barn, chicken, and horse. So we have all of our animals covered at the main starting area. We do have contracts available on this map. We start up by owning two large greenhouses. They are also at the main starting farm. And then we have 20 collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. Since we are down here at the vehicle shop, we have the Massey Ferguson 5S105 small tractor. We have the Valtra T255 Versu and the Valtra Valmet 8750 medium tractors. We have the Topliner 4090H harvester, and that is going to be paired up with the 4090H header and header trailer. We've got the Schaefer 4670T telehandler the Crampy Halfpipe HP20 trailer, and the Rudolph TDK301RP trailer. We have the Elo Scorpio 550 Stone Collector, as well as the Ecomat Plow. We have the Terrasem C6F Cedar, and the Maxima 3-Till Planter. We have the K105 Breedile Fertilizer and Lime Spreader. We have the Pottinger Boss Alpine 251 Forage Wagon. We have a Q3M Quickie front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have a universal bucket. For our telehandler, we have the pallet fork. And then for our weights, we have a 1,750 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, we do have the placeable ramp pack that is available here. And then we also have our coffee harvester available in the shop under mods and DLCs. And we have that there. We also also have a fillable pallet that is available here. And the fillable pallet does look like it's set up to fill all of the bulk fill types, including our coffee and roasted coffee. Now I'm just going to quickly tab over here to our starting farm. Here at our starting farm, we have a nice three bay garage. We do have a pair of pressure washers also. Everything here at the starting farm, including the fences and gates, can be sold. So we have our farm silo, our dump and fill point. And then let's just kind of make our way around because here at our starting farm, everything is just all spread out. So we have our farmhouse located right here to the north of where we are. Then we have our silo. We have then some beehives, beehive locations. And then we have our animals all around this area. So here we have our farmhouse. This is the Holt Belaroon farmhouse. So we have our wardrobe trigger here. We have our sleep trigger at the front door. We have our main gate.
And then we have a fence that's going basically around the perimeter of the starting farm. Now let's jump back over here. So we can take a look at our animals. We have our base game chickens. So we have the food dump. 360 chickens going on in here. And we're gonna have our egg point around the side. Another nice small shed. We have our sheep barn, 65 sheep in all. With our food trough, and then of course our wool. So you see our farmhouse, we're up here behind our farmhouse. We have our horse area for 14 horses. And we have our food trough there for our horses. And our chickens are back up to there, just to give us a little frame of reference. Here's where we all started with our easy sheds. Our farm silo. So here we have our cow barn, so we have our slurry here. And then we have our manure heap. On the other side of the cow barn, we have our buy point for our cows. 45 cows. And then we have our pickup point for our milk. Of course, we have our food and straw inside the shed here. This is where our honey is going to spawn. And we have three large beehives right here. We will be able to get bulk water from the river. And then we have our pig pen, an open pig pen, 30 pigs in all. We have our water and our food. And then we have a pair of greenhouses. So we have a water point, we have our interactive icon, and our pallet point. And then we have our interactive icon, our water point, and our interactive there. So that is pretty much the main starting farm. We have a hayloft also located right here. So we have our dump point and our fill pipe. And like I said, we pretty much have everything going on here. It's just kind of scattered around. We have a pull through silage bunker as well. That is the main starting farm. And again, all of this can be deleted. All the fencing can go away. All of the buildings can go away. And in farm manager mode or start from scratch, basically this area is completely void of buildings. Now, in addition to the two large greenhouses that we have at the start, we also have a sugar mill available on the map. We have a dairy as well as carpentry. Two carpentries, in fact. We have our grape processor. We have our grain mill. We have our bakery, pretty standard there. We've got another bakery going on, another oil mill, cereal factory, tailor. And then we have our coffee roasting. So coffee is an input. Roasted coffee is an output. We have our premium coffee, which is going to take roasted coffee and output premium coffee. We have our sawmill and our base scheme BGA. Now with that, let's bring this up and I guess we'll kind of make our way around the map. Let's head to the, um, let's head to the east and then make our way around from there. Huh. 
That's interesting. We have our lime mine. So if we do buy this land, we'll be able to come down here and collect this lime that's just freely sitting here on the ground. Don't, don't fall off the bridge. And this is going to be our lime mine buy point. And we have our stone crusher down here as well. Up on this hilltop, we have one of our rain cell points. With our dump station Oops. here below the roof. Up here on the top of this hillside, we also then have our sawmill. So we have our pallet spawn point, we have our log cell point, our wood cell trigger, and then our fill point for wood chips and our interactive icon. We have a biomass heating plant cell point up here. Pretty nice view. And then we have Mama Joe's Diner. Man, what a nice cell point up here on top of this mountain. Let's make our way across the map here. This is one of those buildable sites I mentioned earlier. One of our bakeries is available right here. Our dump point, pallet point, and interactive point at the front door. Another grain cell point. This time a little bit lower down. Our spinnery dump point, pallet point, and of course our interactive point around on the other side. This is our lime mine that we talked about. As we make our way over here to the northeast corner of the map, we're coming over here to another one of those potential building sites. This is going to be our carpentry. Right, base game production here. So we have our interactive icon, our wood cell trigger, and then our pallets around the back. Coming down the eastern side of the map. Coming over here to our sugarcane cell point. So we have the dump station here. And the way this works is you would just kind of make your way in, make a big loop, and then come on out. Now we're coming over here to our premium coffee roaster. It looks like the grain mill, but this is just a modified production. And you can see it says premium coffee. So we've got dump point, interactive point, and our pallet spawn point. Over here we have our grape processor. So we have our pallet, interactive point, and our dump point. Pretty standard stuff going on here. We have a cell point. Now making our way across the southern edge of the map. As we can see, we've got some nice rolling fields, rolling hills. Another one of these viable areas where you can build out a farm. This would be an interesting map for multiplayer. Especially if you're going to be doing sugar cane or coffee and things like that. That is a little bit of a time crunch in single player. Up on the hill, we have our farmer's market cell point. We also have our carpentry. 
There are two carpentries on the map. We have an interactive icon, a dump point, and our pallet spawn point. Down below, we're going to have a cotton cell point. And then a bale cell point. We have our biogas plant. We have a single three-sided silage bunker. We have our dump point for our slurry. We have our two uh, digesters. We have our interactive icon. And then we have our digestate output right there. So this is going to be the Elm Creek biogas plant. Here we have our cereal factory. We have another grain cell point. And let's circle back over here to our vehicle shop. Remember, this is where we load it in for the first time. We'll go ahead and pick up a Mahindra just to see where vehicles spawn. Then also at the shop, we do have a usable forklift. Then we have our dealer trigger located here along the side of the building. So pretty good size to hurry here for our vehicles to spawn. And not that narrow of an exit, so pretty nice there. And you'll be able to go left or right out of the shop. Then across the river, we have our farm. We have our oil mill. Fairly standard stuff going there. We have our fuel point. And the fuel point also has a vehicle workshop trigger. We have a grocery cell point with our dump station here at the back. Uh, I feel like we've already been, yeah, we've been there. Now, this is an interesting area. We have two cell points here and they're both labeled the same thing so we have siesta i believe that's proper and then we have another siesta so a dump point there and then we have another dump point where we have to bring it around up this ramp and around the corner it would be nice to have seen this set up with two different names just because now if you look here at your prices screen you're going to be like uh well which which one is it right you're going to be wondering well which which siesta is it so we can tag it and then we can see oh it's the one in the back versus this one oh it's the one in front so i'd like to see that say siesta one siesta two siesta a siesta b we do have a usable forklift over here at that dual siesta point. Here we have our roasted coffee place. So we're going to be able to get our roasted coffee there. We're going to dump our coffee beans here. And our interactive icon is just around the corner. We have the grocery, which we've already talked about. Then coming into town here, well, we have our grain mill. Another little grocery cell point. We 
We have a restaurant sell point. We have our dairy. Sorry, I thought that was a sell point there. Got a little turned around myself. Another grocery sell point there. And I believe that is pretty much everything that we've already looked at. Right? Let's come over here and just look at the PDA real quick. Because there's a whole lot of hot spots here in town. Just want to make sure that we've covered everything. So we've had the marketplace. That's the grocery. We had the bakery, the pizzeria, the supermarket. The grain mill, the big grocery, our tailor, we have the dairy. So we have the livestock market, and that is what I thought was over there. We didn't see any hotspot markers for that, which was a little bit interesting. And then we have the restaurant, which we've already seen. So let's jump over here to our animal dealer. And, uh, yeah, where is the... Uh, Where's the triggers? All right, so that's going to be the trigger for the gate. It's going to be an auto trigger, no doubt. And what goes on here? Oh, it is hidden away. Wow, that's, that's brutal. All right, so our animal dealer is here. Hidden away, but it's also not where the hotspot is. This hotspot needs to be moved over here to basically help folks out. So with respect to our scoring, what are we going to do about this map? What do you think? So we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we have both. We have 18 productions built into this map. We have also several buildable areas that are ready for you to put additional production in and or just put additional farms in maybe run this map as a multiplayer that would be pretty neat with respect to the ability to sell all of our basin crops animal outputs and productions well once again we're going to give the map a full point there because we do have the ability to sell all of our base game crops all of our animal outputs and productions we also have coffee roasted coffee and premium coffee added with respect to the farm being customizable, the main built-out farm is totally customizable. We can start in new farm mode and have it pre-built. We can start in farm manager or start from scratch and have it completely empty. Or we could sell and change things around in new farmer mode. So a full point there as well. With respect to buildings where appropriate and ground textures. Well, I'll tell you what. The buildings are, for the most part, base game buildings. So they're going to work as you might expect. We do need to go here into build mode because I want to show you we do have some custom ground textures and plants and trees. And I want to make sure you know where you're going to be able to do your coffee. So for the most part, our buildings, our sheds, silos, containers, they're going to be for the most part fairly standard. We do have, of course, our placeable ramps under production. We will be able to place the custom productions that we have. So if we want to kind of combine or make these productions a little bit closer together, we have our coffee roasting. We have our premium coffee plant that we can put down somewhere else. We also have a farmer's market, which is set up as a sell point for those additional crops that we can also place down just to give us some additional economy options there, as well as a restaurant under orchards that is where we're going to basically be painting our coffee trees and then under landscaping we do have some custom ground textures 
This one's rather interesting in dry grass. And then under trees, we do have some custom trees. So we have a coconut tree, different sizes of coconut trees. And then we have a banana tree. And then under plants, we have our normal standard plants. We also have some meadow. Additional meadow with some shrubbery. We have conifer. Day lilies. Then we have more meadow. This is more grass like. And then another meadow, which has got some blues as opposed to white flowers in it. So we are going to give the map a full point there with respect to ground textures and building textures. And then lastly, trigger interactive areas being clearly marked. Man, that animal dealer is going to come back and bite us because, well... We are ready to give this map a full five out of five, but sadly, one, we have our animal dealer hotspot, which lands us here, but the actual animal dealer is over here, hidden underneath this entryway. So it's not necessarily the over, over, overly easiest to find. So I would like to see the hotspot moved from over there to be more appropriately marked here. I also found that when I jumped to some of these areas, I wasn't able to move. And it was as if I was landing in the middle of the dump grate. So those are all pretty good. Let's just go to, I believe the premium coffee did that to me. No. I don't know. When I was exploring... Oh, here we go. So I can't move. I'm stuck. I can't jump. I can't walk. Because I'm basically landing with my feet in the grate. So some of these hot spots, when you jump to them, you're going to be stuck. Because you land where basically your feet are in the grate. So I would like to see those adjusted. But realistically, as a player, you're probably not really jumping around from hot spot to hot spot like you do when you're just kind of really learning where things are. So we're gonna give the map a score of 4.75 out of five. A very respectable score and a really nice South American map. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map. It's just something you're gonna give it a try. Do you enjoy coffee? It doesn't pop up very often, but I do seem to get some comments when it does pop up that people are excited about that. I do like to see that we do have the coffee harvester included with the building or with the map. So we don't have to go out and obtain a coffee harvester mod in order to make use of it. Again, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.